Bible said, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace so the end of the promise might be, be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of, of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, I want you to pay close attention to each verse. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. God talking to Abraham before him who he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being persu fully persuaded that he had what he had promised, he was also able also to perform. Now listen, verse 18 through 21 again. Who against hope believed, uh, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being per fully persuaded that he, what he had promised, he was able to perform. Now, listen to me. This is familiar stuff tonight, but Brother Riley, I believe with all of my heart that we're living in a time that we need to remind people just who we are, what we are, and what the Word of God teaches us. And the Word of God tries to tell us what we have and what we're equipped with. I'm telling you, if I was to title this message, it would be standing on the promises of God. And the Word of God teaches us, having done all what? Yes. Having done all what? Stand. Therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and we need to stand on the promises of God. Abraham, Brother Ronnie, back many years ago, God moved on him and God began to speak to him. And the Word of God teaches us that there was a little bit of hesitation there, and, but the Word of God said that Sarah laughed when she heard the news. But Abraham counted God faithful. God said, Abraham, I'm going to multiply thy seed as the sand of the sea, and God has done. How many millions of people, Ronnie, yeah. has come from the seed of Abraham? Amen. Amen. Down when Abraham, God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I want you to take thy son, thy only son, a son of an old age, Abraham being about 100 years old, and God done exactly what he said he would do. The Word of God said that Abraham, somebody was talking about it last week again in one of the services. God told Abraham to take Isaac. And Isaac, Zach, I believe it was you, when they was going on the hill, Isaac said, now listen, he said, we've got the wood and the fire, but where's the land for the sacrifice? Amen. Abraham said, son, God will provide. Abraham stood on the promises right. of God. Amen. Amen. Abraham was willing, as I preached so many times, he built the altar, he laid Isaac on the altar, and went as far to draw his knife back to slay his son for God Almighty. But Brother Ronnie, uh, Brother Bobby, I believe the whole time that knife was coming back, and while it was back there, he was saying, God, you still got time to provide a lamb for the Amen. sacrifice. Yeah. Amen. As he drew that knife back, 
Man, there was an angel called out and said, Abraham, you stop right there. God Almighty is providing the land. And what did the word of God say? When Abraham done that, he got God's attention and God came down. He said, Abraham, I'm going to make you a promise. He said, because thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, he said, I'm going to bless you forever. And down through the ages of time, Roddy, we lived on the promises that God made to Abraham. Amen. You can find that in Genesis chapter 22. But in Exodus chapter 12, we hear of another familiar story that we love to preach on. <laughs> Listen to me. When God instructed Moses to tell the children of Israel, he said, I want you to, to provide, to get a lamb, a lamb without spot, without blemish, and I want you to slay it. I want you to uh, apply the blood of the lamb to the lentils uh, and to the doorpost. Uh, he said, because the death angel's going to come through. Uh, yeah. Listen to me tonight. Uh, God said, if the blood's applied, I'll pass by the house. Uh, and I'm telling you, Ronnie, he kept that promise. Yeah, there was death all over the land of Egypt. Uh, like no, death had never ever been experienced before. But I'm telling you, God said, if the blood's applied, the death angel is going to pass by. Ronnie, we're still living by the same promise today. The word of God said, fear not the one that can destroy this body, but fear the one that can destroy both body and soul. I'm telling you what, Lux fried apples may be $5 a can, but he's promised to take care of us, and he's promised that all oh, the summer said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. We're on that seed tonight, and if we'll stand on the promises, we'll never go hungry. Bless you, Lord. Amen. But the blood was applied to the man. That's unexplainable. And people can't understand it today. How in the world, Josh, did some stains on the doorpost and on the lintel? How did that prevent it? Boys, it wasn't in the stain. It was in the blood. And it was in the obedience. It was because that, that Moses and those that followed him, trusted in the word of God, uh, trusted the promises of God. I know it's hard to explain when that angel passed by Zach, how he could determine who was going to be saved and who wasn't going to be saved. Simple as this, without faith is, is impossible to please God. We just got to have it applied like he said. How in the world is God Almighty going to be able to separate the saved and the unsaved? Simple then as it was back then, it will be that simple then. Boys, when the blood is applied, death cannot enter in. Stand it on the promises of God. Amen. Amen. That's good preaching. Let's turn over to Matthew chapter 6. There for just a minute. Verse 25. I want you to pay close attention to a very familiar scripture. Jesus talked and said, Therefore I say unto you. Now, I don't know if my mom was had her glasses on right or, or what. But she told me that she seen the price tag of a loaf of Heiner's bread the other day, Heiner's 35, in a store, $7 and something. Anybody else seen that? I know one thing. Ed found a can of Lux at fried apples for $5. You say, that's crazy. That's unheard of. I don't believe we've seen nothing yet. Amen. How God's promised and God's committed to us. Ronnie, I'm telling you, when I get to thinking about it, when I get to looking at it, 
gas and fuel just keeps going up. Boy, and I tell you what, man, I, I serve a God years ago, years ago, right up here on the hill when Brother J.R. lived up there. David told J.R., he said, my motorcycle won't run. Bobby's shaking his head, yes, and Ronnie remembers it. And uh, Dave, uh, and uh, said, J.R. asked David, said, has it got any gas in it? David said, it's full. David's usually watching. He knows what I'm talking about tonight. J.R. went out there and got to checking things. And, and uh, man, it had, sure enough, it was full. <laughs> he didn't smell it, though. But J.R. cranked and David cranked and couldn't get, couldn't get uh, that thing going. Finally, J.R. stuck his nose down that tank and it wasn't nothing but water. He said, David, uh, did you fill this thing up with water? He said, I sure did. He said, how come you didn't fill it up with gas? He said, we ain't got none. And he said, that don't matter. And listen, gas won't run an engine. But I'm serving a God tonight. Listen, old David or J.R., me or you or Ronnie or anybody else, if we got to go somewhere, we can drag the garden hose out, fill it up. I believe God is able to turn water into gasoline. He turned it into wine, and he promised to take care of it. Amen. Jesus said, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do, do, do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better, not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can one add one cubit unto his stature. Boy, I don't care how much we worry about it. I don't care how much we think about it. Ronnie, we can't think, we can't change things a bit, but I'm telling you what one thing we can do, we can rest, we can lay down, we can sleep on the promises of God. He said, I, I promise you, never leave you, never forsake you. And verse 28, and swats, why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. You know what? Listen to me. Years ago, uh, Solomon being a, you can, you can, Check this out if you want to. It really don't matter, but I just thought this was good to throw in extra. Years ago, during the days of Solomon, God blessed Solomon because he asked for wisdom. God said, because you asked for wisdom to lead the people, I'll give you wisdom, but I'll make you the wealthiest man, the man, a man that would have more than any other man throughout the ages of time. And listen to me, Solomon wore robes that was unlike any other robe that anybody has ever worn. And Solomon went, went out and walked down the fields in his garden. And one day with got his uh, 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 seamstresses, those that made his robes and made his clothes. And he took them out one day and he said, he began to walk through the flower, along the flower beds. Listen, he said, I want you to make my robes with beauty as these lilies and as these roses. And the seamstresses went to work and they returned to him and said, we've come close, but we can't compare. Why did Jesus say this? Many years later, he said, and which of you take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, 
which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or withal, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly what? My goodness, Granny, I ain't a day goes by, Zach. I ain't a day goes by. Listen to me when we get to heaven and hear the whole story. I believe, Ronnie, we'll hear him say, Josh, they wasn't a day that you wasn't alive, that I didn't walk in your kitchen. Didn't I wake you up this morning? Didn't you walk right to your closet? Blessed be thy name. Y'all can sing that in a little bit. But I believe he'll say, Ronnie Vance, they wasn't the a day of your life when you was just a little old sprout of a boy. He said, there wasn't the a day I loved you so much that I didn't send an angel to go into your mommy and daddy's house, open up the cupboards, and make sure that you had plenty to eat. And Ronnie, I'll tell you something else. There wasn't the a day of your life that I didn't send someone to check your closet and to make sure that you had plenty to wear. And I also sent one down to the bank to check your bank account to make sure you had what you need. Amen. Amen. And he'll say, Ronnie, before I leave, he said, I've not only done that for you, I've done it for your children and now your grandchildren. Amen. Bless you, Lord. What's a problem, preacher? We don't stand on the promises. Amen. If we did, we wouldn't worry so much, and I ain't got no room to talk. Yeah. Scares me sometimes. Yeah. I said, God, I, I figured I'd be out of here before all this stuff took place. But I believe we're right at the door. Amen, brother. I believe we're about to hear that trumpet. Yeah. Amen. I believe we can just rest assured. Man, he's taking me out of here very soon. Better finish up. After all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father know, know that ye have need of all of these things. Who left the door open? <laughs> you jump on the kids. I didn't do it. The door standing open. I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it. Man, we got our minds so far from God, we should have said, Hey, God, next time you send that angel down here to take the bridge, tell him close the door. People think we are crazy, wouldn't they? But I know he keeps check on us. The word of God, Jesus said it himself. But here's what it is. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient until the day is the evil thereof. Amen. I was sharing. Go ahead, Zach. About that. I was sharing with Luke down there. Luke hadn't heard it before. But he was talking about God taking care of us. Ain't it such a blessing? You know, every time I've been around Luke, been a other bunch of people around. Luke's like me, he don't have a whole lot to say, he's kind of quiet. Figured some of you get that, but Luke really is. He's man, he got to share. I knew he'd been reading, Ronnie. Yeah. He said sometimes we might under, not understand God's ways of doing things, the way He answers our prayers, and the way He don't answer our prayers. Bless you, Lord. He said, but he's he's committed to us. 
actually looked, somebody went through the Bible and found 8,810 promises. I've said it for years. I've never went through the Bible and checked and made sure they're right. I, I figure if anything, there's more than that. I figure there may be 18 times. But I know one thing. He's big enough to keep them off. Amen. I said, Luke, the best one, my favorite, and everybody's got a favorite. I like that where he said, I'll never leave you. Bless you. Never forsake you. That's right. That old song I like. If I had the voice, I'd sing it. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Our brother wrote, For my God shall supply I, according to what his riches and glory. Brother Luke said, he said, Brother, Brother Richard, he said, you know, all these things that we set up on a pedestal and think it's so great, it's used for the little things in heaven. All these jewels, God building the walls and the gates of it, and all the gold that men kills for and steals for, going to be streets made out of that. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. He said, I'll never leave you. Never forsake you. That's a promise. Another promise. Amen. Acts 2, chapter 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 21. Our brother was preaching. He said, folks, listen to me. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Shall we say? Amen. What a promise. Yeah. Really, nobody has to go to hell. Right. Even though hell is enlarging its borders late. Amen. Day. Yeah. Revelation. Chapter 22, the very last book of the Bible. About what? Five, six verses from the end. In the closing statements of the precious word of God, one more promise was given. Our brother recorded the Spirit says, Come. The bride says, Come. And he said, Whosoever will, let him come. That's something. Amen. All the poor, all the maimed, yeah. all the withered, yeah. all the prisoners, whosoever will, let him come. And take of the water of life for you. Preacher, I don't know. I don't know if it'll work for me. Little John. The epistle of John, some preachers, has got upset because we call him little John. But the epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 17, another promise, another commitment. He said, for the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us all of sin. So, Sister Belinda, there's no reason why anybody can't go. That's right. It's a promise. I believe there's coming a day, and the day's coming shortly, and you know me, I'm not a child enough to be a preacher of gloom and doom. But if the Lord tarries his coming, we better know the word. 
so we can stand on his promises. Toby, I've watched you. I've seen your kids grow up from babies in this church. Both of them. You taught them away. Your mom and daddy taught you. You and Jody. Don't want to leave Jody out. God will provide. God will make a way. Amen. Toby, when there ain't no food in sight, when there ain't no money in sight, you still got to stand on the promise that you've been stealing down through the years. God has committed to us. And when he's promised us that he'll take care of us. Ronnie, I want to be able to stand on this promise. I want to stand. Father, we come before you and we praise you for all that you've done. Yes. I'm thankful, Lord, for your precious word. Man, I'm thankful for your promises. I don't understand sometimes. When Abraham was taking Isaac on the hill, he was over a hundred years old now. He'd been teaching Isaac for several years now. He had demonstrated the faith. Isaac had done senior power. Abraham was in a place that he had never heard of. Not a place, but a predicament. He'd never heard of it happening before. He had never experienced it himself. But he was walking down a brand new road. When Isaac asked him, said, Dad, what are we going to do for a sacrifice? We got everything but the lamb. Abraham said, son, God will provide. God, help us to have the faith of Abraham. Help us to have the strength of Abraham. So many times people think the preacher's got the most faith in the church and the preacher's the strongest in the church. Not so. We're all in this together. We're all children. God, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to stand on your promise. The unsaved, if there's one in the building tonight, view them by live stream. Help them to realize, Lord, that they're going to have to stand on that promise that you made. That our brother wrote in your precious word, for the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. They've got to stand on that promise and have faith that John wrote, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. The door is open to anybody tonight if folks will just come. The Spirit and the bride say come. He that hath no money, he that is the thirst, let him come. Give him courage right now to come and say, Jesus, I come for that promise. I come for that promise. I want to be saved. I want to be cleansed. I want to be made pure. I want to receive my inheritance because I heard that I can be an heir and a joint heir to the throne of Jesus. Give them courage to do that right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Standing on the promises I cannot fall.
of Christ the Lord I'm bound to him eternally by love strong for overcoming daily 